on the Velopta site, uh, there's some C++ code to estimate um, Black Scholes implied volatility of Dow Jones industrial average options with a quadratic uh, volatility function. Um, for the particular specification developed here in this code, uh, we can go back to Dumas, Fleming, Whaley, 1998, and um, there are a number of specifications laid out in terms of estimating implied volatility. So one of the functions I will investigate here is uh, relating implied volatility to a constant the exercise of the option, the exercise squared, the maturity of the option, maturity squared, and the product of the exercise and the maturity. Um, okay, so to get this uh, set up then, go back into uh, develop the website and go back to uh, the Black Scholes Implied Volatility and we we'll see that there's a zip file uh, that opens up and if we take a look at that folder then it's made up of a number of source files C++ source files and a number of C++ header files okay so and the text um, file with some data so just to maybe take a, a view at what's going on and how we can first of all what does this involve and then how do we run the estimation let's open the raw data and you can see here there are three columns uh, as it turns out the three columns involve an exercise price the market price of a put option uh, and uh, remaining maturity to uh, option expiry expressed in days so I've already um, copied this and pasted into a spreadsheet and I have the following data so it's the same this first column here corresponds with the first column here second column and third column okay and so they're set out here and what I want to initially do is to estimate an implied volatility but in order to estimate the implied volatility of an option I require in addition the spot price of the underlying of the index the Dow Jones Industrial Average I need some data for dividend for the risk free rate and for uh, dividend yield uh, to make this work Okay, so if you go back to the header files and to um, the source files, C++, if we open up the first file here, okay, um, we can pull down so Dow Jones Industrial Average and the data you see here for the spot price is 129.14. Risk to rate is 3, dividend yield of 0. Okay, so let's close that down again and go back into Excel. And we can see, okay, the spot price corresponds to risk to rate, the dividend yield. Okay, so the exercise here is basically um, estimating the implied volatility for each of the options. Um, the way the data is presented, it's presented as option chain data to get some idea what that might mean if we go to um, let's say Apple Yahoo Finance and just take a look at the portal for the Yahoo Finance data for the for the stock price initially if we go to this heading options we can see the data that available here is we have a strike price we have uh, the last price of the option and we have a variety of different exercise prices so that's the strike 
and we have similar data here for the put option and what we might notice here is that as the strike price is increasing right the the value of the option is increasing as well okay so typically that's what we find as the strike price is increasing the value of the option has gone up and we are increasingly in the money as the exercise price uh, increases okay so can we see that from the text file as the exercise is increasing here the value of the option is going up okay as we increase the exercise the value of the option is increasing so this is obviously put option data and it's option chain data okay so if we go back into excel for a moment um, the the exercise if we want to take the raw data as presented in text file and pull out implied volatility Poss one possibility here is to use um, bisection technique and the bisection technique that I have is just basically um, I have a function here for black Scholes put I calculate d1 d2 in the usual way I must estimate the n negative d1 n negative d2 which we'll use in turn so basically the put here is the familiar uh, exercise e neg e negative rt by n d2 right and then we have the spot price and the spot price is being multiplied by e negative qt n negative d1 so it's negative so we have the exercise discounted at the risk per rate multiplied by n negative d2 we have the spot price multiplied by the uh, exponential so e negative qt multiplied by in turn n negative d1 and then in turn down here i invoke to use the bisection i invoke this function and um, i seed a high value and low value for volatility i set out a convergence criteria keep performing this action until the value of h and l converge okay and uh, so basically that's the bisection and um, if we look at the values then we have the spot price the exercise we have the risk free rate we have the dividend yield and then we have the time period which is our 37 days and i'm assuming there's going to be 365 days in the year so that 37 gets divided by 365 and then finally at the market price of the option the market price of the option okay and that gives me the implied volatility if i drag that down I get all the implied volatilities okay and it's a relatively fast function okay so um what i want to do is set out this specification and so for each of those implied volatilities that i just estimated in excel i want to estimate an ols regression and in turn produce values for the coefficients a constant the coefficient on x so on up to the coefficient on the product of the exercise and the expiry okay so in excel that's relatively trivial we can organize our data as follows okay so we we have these these implied volatility figures right i want to set out uh, an applied volatility a deterministic volatility type function i have implied volatility what's x x is just the value of the exercise x squared the time period is 37 divided by 365 i square that product of the two and so i have if you like the independent variables in for the ols regression the relationship that i'm trying to estimate here will be a0 by a1 and a4 by t squared 
and I should also have here a5 multiplied by k by t. So these are the, this is the specification that I'm trying to estimate, and that's consistent with this set of terms here, right? This expression here. So if I go back into Excel, let's have a look at how that's done. Well, I've got to organize my data and preferably set the data out as a set of values. So if I copy and paste these values in as, as paste values, so if I copy and paste, so if I copy those, copy, and then, then come back over here and paste special, paste special values. Right. I have values here as opposed to formulas. And to perform the Linest estimation, you just simply, so the estimation here is Linest. Right. So to perform that estimation, not too difficult. All we need to do is set out equal to Linest. And we must specify the dependent variable. So the implied volatilities. And then we must set out the independent variables. So that's our matrix of independent values. And then I come back and do I have a, a constant? I do want a constant because I've specified here an A0 in the relationship. And in addition, I do want other statistics, including R squared. Now I can to run this estimation control shift return because it's an array function but just doing one cell is going to produce what's here i need for one two three four five and six across okay so i must come down cross five and down six one two three four five six and highlight here in the function bar and control shift enter and i get an output an array output and again curiously even though here the values went in as you know this order the output is reversed so if the specification if the coefficient on x is a1 that's what will appear on the site so we have a0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So the constant appears last. Then the coefficient in A1, the coefficient in A2, coefficient in A3, A4, and A5. Okay, so that's the, the coefficient values for the function as specified before previously here. Okay, so that's the those coefficients estimated. Now what can I do with those coefficients? What I would like to do is estimate then the fitted, the implied volatility associated with, um, from the quadratic. So if you like, this is a quadratic function and what I would like to output is the fitted volatility. Okay. So to make that happen, it involves taking each of these estimated parameters and multiplying in turn by the consistent independent variable on the side. So A0 initially starts out on its own. I F4, so if I had put in initially the coefficient for A0, which would be this one, I would then hit F4, it would dollarize. You see the dollar signs um, appearing here. So they appear in the function, and we hit return. They, they appear now in the function, we hit return, and we have a fitted value of 19. Okay, and if, um, because everything is dollarized, and the cell reference are locked, if I pull the next one down, I get the next value. And in turn, if I pull this one down, so I drag it to the next cell, 
this these cold